All right, let's look at this question nine from November 2018 from the common paper for the whole country. This question is actually a bit of a problem. If you've looked at the memo already and are confused, you'll see that there's actually a lot of options in the memo that have different answers. So what's going on with this question is that the person who worked out the question did not actually check the system was in equilibrium. So you have to solve this question to assume that the system is in equilibrium, that um, this ball here, the sphere is uh, being attracted to the sphere and everything is in equilibrium. And the person didn't actually work the question out properly. So there's a whole lot of different answers that are possible for this. So, but I'll talk you quickly through the logic behind it. So here, a small isolated sphere with a mass of 0, 0,2 grams carrying a charge of plus 7 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs is suspended from a horizontal surface by a string of negligible mass. A second sphere B carrying a charge of minus 8 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs on an isolated stand attracts sphere A so that the, ang the string forms an angle of 20 degrees to the vertical. The horizontal distance between the centers of the two spheres is 3 centimeters. Refer to the diagram below. Okay, so here's the diagram. Then it says state Coulomb's law. It says draw a vector diagram of the forces acting on sphere A. Now, I think they told you the mass here so that you can remember to put in the Fg on the sphere. Okay, because the first force, if we're making a force diagram here, the first force that's going to be on here is going to be Fg downwards. So label this Fg in your brain. The second one that's going to be here is going to be the tension up the rope here. Okay, so there's my tension up the rope here. And then now you have to look at these two. This is a positive charge, this is a negative charge. Which way is the electrostatic force working? They are unlike charges, so they are attracted. So this little thing A wants to go towards B like this. And this would be the electrostatic force over here. Okay, so we've got F, G, T and F, E. So that's three marks for the vector diagram. And then it says indicate at least one angle. That is for the fourth mark. So what you can either do is exactly like in the picture here, is you can draw in a vertical and draw in 20 degrees. Or if you really wanted to, you could draw in a horizontal over here. Okay. Oops, I've changed this from an arrow. Okay, let me draw in another one over here. You could draw in a horizontal over here and then you could mark in over here, theta is 70 on this one. Okay. So that would be your fourth mark for the force diagram. Then it says to you, calculate the magnitude of the electrostatic force that sphere B exerts on sphere A. So the most obvious way to do this is using F equals K Q1 Q2 over R squared because that's the easiest way to find force. Okay, so if you put the numbers in your calculator here for this one, you end up with some force here. Once you've put the numbers in, you end up with like 5,6 times 10 to the negative 4 Newtons. Okay, so that's the most obvious way is to do it with F equals KQ1, Q2 over R squared. But because you've got a force diagram, what you can also do is you can say, okay, this system must be in equilibrium. And this is where the problem with this question lies, is if you work out the values, the system is not in equilibrium because the person that wrote the question didn't think it through. Okay, so using F equals KQ1, Q2 over R squared, you end up with this value as your answer. But if you say here, okay, you can say the Fe, the electrostatic force, remember that's this arrow here, the Fe is equal to the tension in the string. Remember, it'll be the only thing that's got a horizontal component is the tension in the string. The weight doesn't have a horizontal component. So the Fe is going to be equal to the horizontal component of the tension. So the horizontal component of the tension is T cos 20. Okay, why is it T cos, uh, cos 20? I'm lying to you, it's T cos 70. Okay, because I took this 20 degrees and I made it a 70 degrees to the horizontal and I can say then my X component is T cos 70. So that's fine, I can say that is what my electrostatic force is, but then you're like, okay, now what do I do? I actually need to find out 
what is t but we know fg okay so we can say that fg which is the weight of the sphere is equal to t sine 70 okay because there's a 70 degree angle here and so the vertical component of the tension is going to be t sine 70 and that's going to be equal to fg so then from this you can get a value for t uh, for t and then you say if you if you um replace this over here okay you put um the one equation into the other equation you can end up with fe equals fg over sine 70 okay look here let me rearrange this for you looking at the second equation there t is going to be equal to fg okay no fg divided by the sine of 70 okay and then you can because you've got a value for t you can put this into that expression okay and then you get cos 70 over sine 70 and you end up with a value and it's a completely different value to the value you found using the electrostatic forces so they are just two different ways of solving the question and if the question was sought out uh, thought out properly then these two would have been equal but they're not which is why there's two answers in the memo because then what happens is they say to you calculate the magnitude of the tension in the string and then when you calculate the magnitude of the tension in the string you can either use fe your value that you got for f i mean for fg so you can use fg to calculate the tension in the string that gives you one value or you can say okay i worked out this electrostatic force using f equals kq1 q2 over r squared and then the tension is um, equal to the horizontal components of that and that gives you another value or you can do so we can use either the weight to calculate the tension or we can use the um, electrostatic force and it ends up giving you different answers so that's why this is actually not a very good question it's not been well thought out but you should at least know that these are your avenues for solving it and your avenues for solving it are using the electrostatic force and the second avenue for solving it is to use the mass of the sphere and so if somebody had a back calculated from this the mass of the sphere then they would be fine but obviously they didn't so it was a badly thought out question.